Okay, so we're going to talk about um, how to shade things in perspective. Okay, so the first thing we need to realize is that as things get further back towards that vanishing point, they're going to get lighter. Um, this is contrary to a lot of people's natural reaction to make them darker and gradually get lighter as they come towards us. Um, but in reality, things as they get further away tend to get lighter. Um, one of the reasons that we see it as lighter is because we're seeing less values. Okay, so when you look at, you know, like this sphere, all right, there's about six or seven different colors in that sphere. And then there's less in this sphere, less than this, and less than this. We get down to about three different colors when we get back here. And that would be the natural progression of that. Okay. Um, so that's number one. It's going to get lighter as it gets back here. Um, the other thing is you have to keep in mind whatever your, your light source is going to be for this. So if I'm saying, obviously, these spheres are being lit from above, okay, um, everything's going to get lit from above. All right, so if I'm looking at something like, you know, shading this box here, okay, um, when I do the top of it, all right, I'm going to, whatever my main color is going to be, all right, the top is obviously going to be lighter, all right, and just like if I do anything else, I want to work in small circular strokes, but I also want to be working back with the contour, which is going back towards that vanishing point. Okay, so it's going to be a lighter version on top anyway, all right, because of where I've chosen to put my light source, and then as it gets further back, it's going to get a little bit lighter. All right, obviously this box isn't going to be going back all the way to the vanishing point, so I don't need to worry about making it, you know, too distinctly light, all right? But the front of this would be just a little bit lighter, or I'm sorry, a little bit darker than the back edge of it. I'm going to try to go as quick as I can here so that you guys don't have to watch me do it. 20 minute shading video if we can help it and now as I switch colors again we're just going to get a little bit lighter with this one right because again it's not going back to the vanishing point so again my, my strokes I'm trying to go circular strokes, but I'm also working front to back with the perspective on this. So again, because I'm dealing with the top of this and I'm having these things be lit from the top, I'm not going to work too much into my really dark blues. Okay. And I can always pull some white into this, right? Both to lighten it and to help blend those three shades of blue together. Okay, so that might be how my top looks. All right, I'm getting a little bit of a hard edge there, so I'm gonna break that up a little bit. Okay, now. What I've made here is I have an open box, yeah, an open box. Okay, so we can see the inside of it. Obviously, if the light is coming from the top of this, okay, um, you're not. There's going to be almost no light going inside of this. Okay, so that's where I'm really going to have to work with my darks. All right, so inside here, all right, and that light is going to hit. I'm going to say that it's only open in the front. Okay, so that light is going to hit the corners the least, all right, and it's going to hit the back end, the bottom of that box, the least. All right, so that's where I would start whatever my darker value is going to be. So for this, I'm just going to lay in some purple, all right, 
gradually lighten that up. Okay, pull in my other blues. And that will go in with this indigo blue. Get some of that blue back, a little less purple. Alright, so because we're doing this as a closed, the back end of this box is closed, alright, now we're just concerned with how the natural light would hit. So if the, light, if the light is coming down from above, you know, the bottom of that box is going to be dark. So it's, it's kind of contrary to what I was saying as far as things getting lighter as they get further away because now we're just concerned with where would the light actually hit this box. Alright, and again, I'm trying to work with the perspective of this as I lay this up, these values in. Okay, I want to go back on that same angle that my box is going. Okay. like we learned with the regular shading, right, because it's blue, I can work some orange into this, into where the darkest spots would be. Really intensify that dark, make it pop a little bit more. I can work back in with that indigo, blend that orange in a little bit more. Be able to keep the edges that I can see in here, right in the corners. It's going to be you're going to have less light hit those corners, so I can keep them fairly dark. My goal here, obviously, is to shade it, but I don't want to be reliant on the outlines. Okay? I want to try not to just have the outlines have to define this thing. I want my values to define this. Okay, and remember, anywhere that I see a line is really just a darker value next to a lighter value. All right, so if that line starts to disappear. I just need to darken in more of that. All right, so that might be how that box looks. Okay, then obviously. Because I'm making this box, if, if I'm making this box sitting, okay, then I would add a shadow to this box. Obviously, it's being lit from above, so if it's being lit from above, we're not going to see that much of a shadow around it, but you would see a little bit of a shadow. All right, something sort of like that, okay? Now, with these things, with these spheres floating above, all right, since we're gonna talk shadows, we need to consider the shadows that these would also cause, okay? So in doing this, I wanna try to get a, a small, I'm sorry, a light pencil, all right? I would come down wherever I want, wherever I think that that shadow would fall, all right? We lay in where that shadow approximately would be, okay? Then we can go back with our ruler, all right? And really, I don't need full lines. I want to try to not to erase too much stuff. I can just put 
partial lines. I go to the sides of this shadow. Right, make some lines underneath where those are. And then I can, using those guiding lines, know where those shadows are going to be. Okay. Now the difference is, this is considered a cast shadow. All right, shadow that's really like basically attached to the object, whereas this is more of a drop shadow, right? That appears to just kind of be dropped out of that object. And with these ones, the center of that shadow is going to be the most intense, and it's going to gradually get lighter as it comes out from that center. All right, and just like the spheres. We're going to see more values, more darks, more intensity in the ones closer to us than we will in the ones further away from us. Okay, so let me try to get you a little, a little closer to that. Okay, you can kind of see how that plays out. Okay, so as we start to shade. All right, again, we're not going to color these, okay? We're shading to make these things look as real as we can to make them look three-dimensional, all right? There's a big difference between just coloring, just making them a flat red, and shading and showing value and showing volume and creating depth with our shading, okay? So that's the gist of how we would be doing the uh, one-point perspective shading, okay? You guys have any questions, just let me know.